Hello everyone, it's time for my houseplant tour video of 2022. I feel like a year has gone by so quickly since my last houseplant tour video and I'd like to say a massive thank you for the overwhelming support. I had no idea that video was going to get such positive response. So if you're new to this channel and you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link down in my description and towards the end of this video. Um, it'll be good to compare and see where we're at with our current collection. I think uh, we've been able to keep to what we aim for this year, which was to only introduce new plants very selectively to replace old ones. And if you check out my previous video, you'll be able to see the growth and progress of some of the plants we had last year. So grab yourself a nice drink and let's start the tour. I'll start with the plants we have in our rooms. And here's how well our snake plant is doing. It's a dwarf Laurentii that was about 2 inches high when I first got it and they are known to grow up to 10 inches which is its full height right now but there's still new leaves shooting so I'm excited to see where this little one will be when we check back this time next year. It's due for repotting for the fourth time as you can see it's a bit wobbly now but it's not overwatered, so it just needs a wider pot to spread out and stabilize better. Right next to it is my Hawothia succulents. These babies are easy and have grown consistently with minimal water and plant food, so a great ornamental type plant for our room with no pest worries. Our other dwarf snake plant, the honey eye, has grown much taller and fuller in the last year. I think we only had 7 leaves in the last houseplant video. It's forming into a beautiful shape now. We have two golden pothos in our collection and the one that started small is kinda growing out of control right now. It's already on a cocoa pole, but I'm going to have to extend or replace it with a longer one to clean up this area a little bit. So it's trailing all the way around and to the front right now, which was a look we kept for the past year, but now I think we're going to change it up a bit and try growing it upwards for a different look. Then we've also got our first Snow Queen Pothos here. She doesn't grow very quickly but her leaves are bigger than the other two pots of Snow Queens we have which I'll share later. Oh and in case you're wondering, I'm not fussed about having some browning on the edges of the leaves. I've mentioned in my previous videos that I like when plants don't look too perfect because they tend to appear artificial and I just like nature taking its course, showing imperfections as well. It also means no stressing about having plants looking immaculate at all times. One of the greatest compliments we received was when guests were at our place and asked if any of our plants are fake and that's just great because we want to create an oasis of life and with life comes ups and downs so it's okay if our plants don't look 100% all the time. As you can see here, the same applies to this Marble Queen. Last year, this was growing leaves all inside the pot but now we've got it trailing around this arch handle which I really like as an alternative to having a pole put in. On our dining table, we've got this neon pothos and I'm going to have to clean this up as well. It's kind of growing out of the pot now. Spinning to the other side is the plant featured in this video's thumbnail, the very beautiful Philodendron Pink Splash. This is a newcomer not featured in last year's house plant tour and I'm really happy with how she's fitting into our space and putting out new leaves the past month and a bit. Mm -hmm. 
which is one of my favourites in my pink collection, which brings me to the pink Syngonium and the one we have has very light layers of pink blending in with green. I quite like the subtlety of that and it's just a different look from the strong contrasting pink and green variations on some of these Syngoniums. Just a tinge of pink that looks like the sun is setting on the leaves. Zooming in and we've got this stunning Syngonium Fantasy slightly hidden behind but making an impact with bold variegations. This one wouldn't have been in last year's tour as well. It was part of my anniversary gift from the hubby and it really does steal the show. It's been growing so well that I'll need to put a coca pole in real soon to give it all the support it needs. But look at that. The baby leaf here, just so beautiful. Then to this side, we have our watermelon peperomia, slightly sunburned here when it was closer to the window. So I've moved it further in and kept these leaves anyway, but I love the size of this leaf and the little baby ones behind are so cute. The distinct watermelon rind pattern is a nice one to add to every houseplant collection. Now moving on to one of our two philodendron florida plants. This one is the larger size and we've had to move her down from her original spot because she's growing so tall now. I simply love this plant. The lobes to each leaf makes this one stand out from all the other leafy green plants and I think it just looks so good but it's often overlooked at nurseries. I shouldn't forget to include my little avocado plant here. I just started this one late last year and my avocado video is another crowd favourite which I'll link down in the description if you'd like to check it out. Moving down our drinks trolley to our second Snow Queen Pothos. Now this one was I think a $3 buy from Ikea. Came home with a few tiny leaves that have now progressed to this. The leaves are getting brighter and larger in size too, which is really lovely and it just brightens up this section here. Here's the big brother of the family, our giant white bird of paradise, also known as the Strelitzia nicolai. I reckon ours looks very much like the ones outdoors with weather beaten leaves and it's just natural occurrences like this one here for example, the leaf didn't quite open entirely so it tore in a couple of sections and you can see some browning on a few leaves as well but for the most part it is healthy and continues to grow taller so we're excited to see this potentially reach our ceiling someday. This then goes on to our second philodendron florida. It's a smaller one but boy it's a grower. In fact, it grew so quickly, it actually snapped right at this point before I could put a pole in it, so I took the broken stem and made cuttings out of it. It's bounced back like nothing happened, and this time around, I'm going to get to putting a pole in before it breaks into half again. Here are the cuttings from the part that snapped off. It's done so well in water that I've decided to keep them in here for use as table decor. You can see the healthy roots that have formed in Hydro and these little new leaves that have grown. So yeah, I don't think I'll transfer them to soil. Besides, the mother plant grows so quickly anyway, so I should be able to propagate more throughout the year. Moving on to this Syngonium Confetti, one of the plants on our wish list last year that's a newcomer to my houseplant tour. I love the little pink confetti on the green leaves, 
but as you can see there are some browning that I'd love to get on top of so hopefully this will start to look better in the next year. At the back we've got a smaller pot of Agonema sitinohaliza. Yes, I love this plant so much, I couldn't pass on getting a second one with the store credit I had. However, this one is suffering from an attack of millibucks, so I've been keeping a very close eye to continuously remove every sign of those pests. Here's my first original pot of Sitino Aliza that I raved about in my video last year. She's still here and going strong. I can't get over how beautiful the veining and colours are and this plant looks so good when it's full to the brim with leaves. In the corner here is the Raphidophora tetrasperma or mini monstera. Let me get that yellow leaf off. It's nothing to be concerned about, just all the leaves saying goodbye in their time. There's another one here. But I must say, this plant was looking really good all through 2021 into 2022, but only just recently started getting these spots about a couple of weeks ago, and I think it's been a bit stressed with watering as I was introducing some plant food as well. To be honest, it should start to calm down given a month or two, and if not, I could always propagate cuttings and go from there. If you've seen last year's houseplant tour video, this was the plant that was in our bedroom, but it outgrew the space really quick so we moved it to our living area. Actually, this is also due to have a pole place in the pot. It's growing way too tall now and definitely needs better support. I might do a video soon on how I stake my plants, so feel free to subscribe and hit that notification button to be informed when my new video goes live. Here's one that I propagated last year. I started two pots with the cuttings, but only one took off, so don't be too hard on yourself if you try and it doesn't succeed. You know, nature has its way of taking its own course, and you just need to give your best and not stress so much because house plants are meant to be enjoyed in the comforts of your home instead of bringing more frustrations into your life. Moving on to the top of the shelf is our Calathea lensifolia or rattlesnake plant, the easiest Calathea to care for in my experience. This one is a nice plant to have up high so you can see the dark aubergine colour on the underside and when it dances, you get a different view throughout the day as the leaves open and close. Now this Syngonium Neon Robusta had a hard year and was heading for the bin but the roots were still healthy so I cut it down to pretty much nothing and left it outside to recover. So here she is now, looking a lot better than before but still not quite there yet so she's a work in progress for 2022. Growing happily are my Oxalis Triangularis. It did go dormant towards the end of winter last year but with time and the warmer season, it's back having just completed a round of flowers. Such a pretty one to have indoors and easy to care for as well. Our third and final snow queen is in this bowl-like planter. I originally planted it with some syngoniums as a housewarming gift, but between COVID and lockdowns, it's got a permanent spot now in our place. The syngoniums didn't do well, so I'm going to remove that and clean up the pothos so it looks tidier. Drooping down the side is this Alocasia wentii, which I'm happy to report is doing a lot better than in last year's video. If you have outdoor space, I highly recommend separating plants that have pest issues and treating them that way. Ah, our beloved golden pothos. This is the bigger one and I'll show you how much it's grown. It stretches along the length of our calyx shelf and up to the top of the plant, then onto the other side. We also have a separate vine trailing down. 
healthy with beautiful variegation, the ivy is a great space filler that doesn't demand much care. It's looking a bit sparse on top so I think I'll start cleaning this pot as well and tidy up the vines a little. On the left is the Spatifilum Peace Lily and this large size one is another good space filler plus. This one is known for purifying and improving the air quality which is something we could all use at home. This Alcon fern that was on the living room wall has been replaced with our new LEGO world map so this little guy might go on the outside soon. It's been doing well and it makes a nice wall feature. Next is also a newcomer to my houseplant tour, a fairly rare unicorn, the Stefania erecta. I got this online with a credit voucher and when it arrived, it didn't look great to begin with. But there are signs of new growth soon which I'm excited about. It's a plant that demands a lot of patience to get right with dormancy up to 3 months and risk of root rot. But I'm determined and I also need to get a suitable planter for it so that the codex sits higher up to give it the right look. Greetings from the editing room. So it's been a few weeks since I filmed the original footage and I thought I'll quickly show you the progress of this plant today before the video goes live. When it got into full gear, it literally was growing about a centimeter a day. I kid you not. My hubby said one night that it's definitely grown taller than what it was that morning. So this is a really promising sign. Part 2 of my husband's anniversary gift to me last year is this heartleaf philodendron. Complete opposite to the Stefania, this heartleaf is one of the easiest plants to care for, low maintenance and can survive in low light. I think I'll also add this to the growing list of plants to add a support to and start guiding it upwards. If looking for ivy alternatives, philodendrons are a great choice. Here we have our Spatifilum domino variegated peace lily. This was around for the last houseplant tour and I think it looked a little bit on the dry side back then but it's a lot healthier now. Have a look at this flower and how it's shaped. Hubby calls it the devil flower because of the two horns. What a bizarre looking one. The domino is my piece lily of choice. I'm a fan of the subtle white paintbrush speckles and I love how it contrasts the deep green foliage. Now moving on to the corner of the window, this little collection here. Starting with our bonsai which was very badly attacked by spider mites. So you can see the leaves have lost a little bit of its glow but I'm glad to report the situation is under control now and the plant isn't looking as bald as it was a few months ago. I would love to have more bonsai in my collection. I've seen some that are really stunning and it would be nice to have a small selection of mini bonsai trees at home. Next is the string of turtles. We got two pots of these mini ones from Ikea and they are growing so long now. I've got some dried leaves to clean up. might be easier just using tweezers later. Look at these cute teeny tiny turtles. The Piper Crocatum. Now this stunner is a bit of a drama queen. I keep losing a leaf for every new one so it's growing to be a stalky plant. The leaves are still beautiful but I'm hoping I can retain some along the way. Then here we've got the Calathea Onata, also thriving in the drama department because she's a funny one. I had just one leaf for months end, then all of a sudden massive leaves were unfurling but then we also get the crispy edges and here's the baby pot doing a little bit better. 
there's this perforated leaf here that this plant came with not sure what happened there but i'm hoping we get less drama this year because the pinstripes can look really nice on healthy leaves if you've watched last year's houseplant tour and are still here you're probably wondering where is the monstera deliciosa well, here it is, with a few new leaves growing in water. This here is the first full hydroponic leaf, complete with beautiful fenestrations. Our monstera struggle in soil for no particular reason, so we decided to give it a go in water, and that's kept the plant alive longer than it would in soil. You can see how sad the older leaves look, so I'm hoping this new chapter in water prolongs its time. No houseplant lover is without challenges, and I'm certainly no exception to the rule. This is how my Tradescantia tricolor looks after having cut down everything to let it regenerate. I hope this inspires you to keep on keeping on with your plants, no matter how sad they may look sometimes. And this Persian shield is a good example. This plant was another online purchase that struggled in the first couple of months. Leaves were drying out, the purple was nowhere as vibrant and just looking sad overall. You can see how many leaves I removed. With persistence and care comes the bright fruits of labour, and this Persian shield is testament to that. Another good plant to add height to your indoor space is the Thanante Setosa Grey Star or Never Never plant. It dances like a Calathea with its leaves brushing against the walls throughout the day. Now here's my Calathea Makoyana and how it's coping with Millie bugs. It's heartbreaking to see the damage to existing leaves, but there's hope in the new ones, so we'll see if this makes it through the year fighting this annoying pest. I wanted to show you guys the reality of owning houseplants, and when you bring something that thrives outdoors into your home, there's bound to be challenges. Don't lose hope as more often than not, plants can bounce back with proper care. I've also got this Caladium Hilo Beauty. I get about a maximum of three leaves growing at a time, so not a very lush plant, but again, spider mites loving this beauty, so it's been a bit of a struggle for this little one who's fought hard to make it through the year. Then I have this gorgeous pot of mixed Caladiums. These go dormant for me most of the year, not just in winter. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen my stories just a few months ago when the leaves were in full bloom and size. Absolutely stunning, but it's starting to slow down now. You can see the browning as the leaves die off. So this is what I'm left with, but I'm glad to have this in my collection, even if they don't look great all year round, cause they're exceptional when they start growing again. Another plant that started to be difficult the past year is our ZZ or Zanzibar Gem. It's just not growing very well and I'm pretty sure we have the watering down pat. So I'm just going to keep monitoring this in 2022 and see how we go. Moving to our outdoor space, this is the Schlaffera Madame de Smet or Variegated Umbrella Tree. This was initially placed indoors, but it's grown to command such a large amount of space now, so we've moved it out and it's just thriving so beautifully as you can see and makes a very nice feature piece at the corner of the wall. Then we've got this philodendron that also didn't enjoy life indoors and at one point was left with only one leaf, believe it or not. It's so good to see the soft baby leaf growing and the plant looking much healthier and happier now. Here we have our elephant ear, also another one that enjoys being outdoors so that's where we've left it. Get to know your plant's likes and dislikes in terms of lighting and watering 
then work with how you can better arrange and position them at home. My Tradescantia zebrinas. I wish it was a fuller plant that could fill up the entire pot, but it's flowering and seems to be happy, so who am I to complain? If you're wondering about my Begonia maculata, well, here she is. This temperamental plant dropped all its beautiful large leaves, replacing it with mini ones. I don't think our indoor setting suited it well, so it stays outside now, and I'd actually love to see it full of cute tiny leaves for a new look. Another quick post-edit update. The leaves have definitely grown in size since I first filmed this and the top isn't looking as bald now. I'm loving this pair of angel wings growing side by side and yeah, it's slowly but surely bouncing back. Speaking of getting back into shape, this Alacasia Silver Dragon is another survivor of spider mites. You can see the damage caused here on this leaf. I mean, 2021 for us was free of gnats and aphids, but welcomed spider mites and mealybugs instead, which I personally find more annoying. But you know, it is what it is, and any sign of new growth is a sign to keep on keeping on. This Diffenbachia reflector still giving us bright speckled lime leaves with a new one unfurling soon and it's a stocky plant as most dumb canes are so I like setting this down low so you get to view its beauty from the top. Last but certainly not least is our Alacasia poly. I'm glad it's the right timing to be filming this because as lovely as it looks now, it can get pretty sad towards mid-year for a few months of barely any leaves. So similar to the Caladium, I find that our Alacasia poly is a little more seasonal in our place, but right now it's demanding all the attention with such beautiful foliage. We have little babies at the bottom, and hopefully we can also keep the spider mites at bay. So that wraps up the tour of houseplants we have for most of 2021 going into 2022. I hope you found it helpful if you're looking for similar plants to fill your home and space. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments section below. I'll also leave links to previous videos I've done on easy to care for plants and how to grow plants from avocado seed and a whole other playlist of plant related videos that you might be interested in. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Enjoy life with your plants and take care.